Hey everyone, welcome to another live coding hacking stream on the Raspberry Pi Pico emulator. Um, first of all, as usual, uh, say hi if you are here. Um, I'm looking at the chat. Uh, also, let me know if you can hear and uh, see me. Um, and uh, without further ado, let's uh, get into sharing my screen. And now, um, you know, start digging in. Let me see. So um, I think we we had this uh, note, this like to do note from last time where we had like this plan of what we want to do. I think we were doing interrupts last week. And there was also um, this uh, after last session, um, Che Guevara left a comment um, about the Mulas assembler code. Um, we weren't really sure about the implementation. There was something that uh, didn't make sense. And uh, now uh, Che Guevara uh, pointed, uh, pointed it out. Anyway, it seems like, as he said, the actual code is correct. The issue is just with the test. So for now, we'll keep it open. And, uh, you know, uh, at some point we will get to it. But for now, um, let's... Um, get to, uh, let, let's try to finish the interrupts we started last week. Um, so let's see where were we last week. I think, uh, I don't think the project runs at the current state. Let's uh, try to npm start and see what happens. Uh, I think it's in a pretty uh, broken state because we are, we were like uh, midway implementing. Let's take a look at the git log. Um, yeah, it says two things. First of all, code doesn't compile since we're missing a few bits and we'll do them next week. That's now. And pay attention to this. So I will copy to this uh, file with all this stuff and uh, maybe at the top, not at the bottom. All right. And by the way, do let me know in the chat if everything is correct, because usually at this point uh, I get uh, at least one high or something and uh, I didn't get any so far. So just for, so I, I know that I'm not uh, speaking to myself. Anyways, um, cool. So uh, we had this like, uh, method which we i think copied from the data sheet uh, where did we get that from uh well it's been a week return address exception type i have no idea what's going on here but let's try to uh, look this up in the data sheet hey punith so i don't know about the pio um I think we want to get uh, a GPIO working first and timers, but uh, it's good to, to be optimistic. So maybe, who knows? Anyways, so um, yeah, uh, let's see, where were we? I think this is exception return, uh, but we are still doing the, uh, calling the exception. Uh, that, uh, exception taken. That's that's the, 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 the code we are implemented. Exception taken. Maybe we should call it exception taken instead of raise exception. Uh, just to make our life easier next time when we look for that. Anyways, so... Oh, wait a second. This one is... Is it the exception taken? I think they are like... Um, it's a combination of push tag and exception taken. So this is basically exception entry. It's doing uh, both. So this is push tag. And at some point here, probably here, I guess. Uh, push tag does all these. And then there is like this think this is oh yeah there is already a comment for that so this is exception taken okay and uh, we have um, all right it just says that uh, those registers have an unknown, unknown value which makes sense uh, but we don't need to do anything if it's unknown then we change the current mode which we do here I guess 
Yep, even with the original comment. And then we need to update the IPSR, we do that. And then we have this uh, SP cell, like the uh, register that selects the active stack, which we still need to implement. And then there is like set event register. And then I guess the, this doesn't really matter. And then, yeah, we just uh, jump to the exception, I guess. Um, cool. And hey, uh, Nikari and Tomash, good to see everyone here. I guess there is some kind of delay in the stream or something like that. Anyways, um, let me see. So um, I think we pretty much nailed this one down, except for like this uh, control register and those uh, two stack pointers. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Control. What is this control register? Control. Yeah. That, that's not gonna get us anywhere looking for the control, but maybe here, registers. So we have those. And then uh, there is a PSR, execution state support. Da, 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 da. Okay. Hey, Valerio, good to see you here again. Um, okay, so uh, maybe we'll look for control.spcell. Oh yeah, that seems good. Special purpose control register, two bit spatial purpose register, uh, and priv and SP cell. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Okay. So I guess uh, it just uh, there is like primask, probably for masking priorities. Do we have it? There is like uh, Priority boosting, not masking. Okay, do we have a prime mask? I guess we can create those registers then. So uh, prime mask just has a single bit PM. Uh, so I guess just like with the uh, PM, just like with the flags, we can say it's a single bit and then um, prime mask is a special purpose mask register. And then, oh, yeah, there are there are these instructions, and I think uh, we already have those registers, right? And we just ignore them, so now we can just uh, implement them since it's just like one liner. So CPS ID is true, and then CPS AE is setting it to false. This bit. Um, yeah, let's just uh, double check CPSAE. Yeah, I guess I guess that's all there is about those instructions. Yeah, those, those are like the instructions. So yeah, that's the only thing they do. Uh, if current mode is privileged. Okay, we, we don't implement that yet, uh, privileged mode. I mean, we don't check for that, maybe at some point. And there is also like MRS and MSR, but what is the prime mask? What is the index of this prime mask? Uh, da, 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 set to zero, so it should be false. Uh, where is this PM? PM should be false. Hey, Che Guevara, good to see you again. Uh, yeah, PM is false by default. All right. And then um, where do we have the index of uh, MRS? And oh, there is here. Prime mask is number 16. And uh, so let's implement it in MRS as well. Case sysm, that's sysm, right? Yep, prime mask, then this dot registers, 
this does dm1 otherwise zero and all of the other bits are just like uh, uh we have seen in prima squares that oh there is also the control one we'll implement it in a moment yeah uh, it's reserved so we can assume it's like zero um all right maybe we should refactor it a bit but first of all let's define this uh value actually let's define all the system values this um uh, prime is 16 where did we have this table there was this table yes and then there is like uh, we have aspr and apsr and then iapsr and then uh, EAPSR and then XPSR. Uh, so that's one, two, three. Uh, where did it go? Here and here. Cool. And then we have EPSR six and IEPSR seven. And then we have MSP is uh, eight. And these are all like the spatial registers of the CPU, PSP is nine. And then uh, we have the control, which is 20. All right, system control is 20. And I see a question on the chat. Why not set the value of PM directly to the exception of to learner if else branches um so i think uh tomas is asking uh cps we don't have uh yeah let's add a comment here so we know that this is cps id i think and the other one was cps ae right I'm not mistaken so i think tomas is asking why not just like uh, set pm to the value of like this b single bit that changes between those two and i think it's it's valid either way like uh, i think this is a bit more uh, readable because you can see that these are like two uh, separate instructions in the data sheet so i think it might make sense to keep them separated this way um but anyway i don't think it's like a big deal either way um all right so uh now uh i want to refactor a little so instead of uh having all this uh big table we can do something like these dot registers uh rd equals this dot read spatial register and give it a value of sysm and then we can uh, define uh yeah we don't need this uh, then we can define uh, this uh, method that will take care let's do it before the execute execute instruction read spatial register uh, sysm number and then Instead of this, we can just uh, return, return, and then here also return. Oh, maybe, yeah, and then by default, we can just return, uh, you know, just cancel warn and then. Uh, CSM is lowercase, cool. And uh, yeah, okay, cool, Tomash. Um, all right, so now we can start um, implementing those uh, like two uh, stack pointers. I think uh, we, we can see them here, MSP and PSP. So let's go read about it. There is like, um, what is that? This is probably, oh this is debugging we are not interested in that so there is this main stack pointer and the process stack pointer and which one is active by default two stacks the one main current depends tread mode on 
take control. Okay. Okay, so SP main is like the default. So probably this is zero by default. Where is this control register? Do we see like the yeah anyway um let's add those two bits as well um control fields public sp cell is uh, boolean is false by default sp cell and public uh that was and priv and i guess it's also false by default. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, it, it makes sense that uh, I guess we the thread has privileged access when we start running. Um, all right. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, and then we can uh, add uh, reading and then maybe even writing so uh here instead of uh if uh, this dot sp cell if not and then if this dot sp cell then we will need to implement uh those two uh stack pointer stack pointers um interesting this means that when we we will have to do like to switch between them um, when we are reading from R13. All right. Um, okay. And do we have. Yeah, it's just if it's true, we don't need to compare it with one. And then what else do we have? Um, oh, I wanted to add a control to MRS. So, uh, case is yes, uh, control, then turn, uh, this dot, uh, I think SP cell is like the second bit. Yeah. So two, otherwise zero or this dot, um, SP cell and and preview one otherwise zero okay cool so we can now read from this register as well now there are like um there is like uh this thing where we need to take care of uh the two stack pointers so let's uh add another um let's maybe um create um So only stack pointers, an array of two elements for the stack pointers. And then we can, uh, we have SP main and SP process. So let's internally represent them as zero and SP process would be one. I think it also matches with the um, definition here. And then we need to be careful because, um, yeah, so there are like a few ways to approach that. Um, yeah, maybe instead of, yeah, maybe let's do it differently. Instead of uh, having it this way, let's just have one for the inactive stack pointer. So we can probably uh, inactive or banked stack. All right, and by default it gets zero. And then um, let's implement some getters and setters that will take care of, of this. So uh, first of all, um, so for SP cell, instead of like updating it directly, which we do here, we 
we will uh, add a method that would switch uh, switch stacks and then uh, this dot sp cell value stack which stack do we want uh, sp process I think it was didn't we call that sp process da, 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 da. or is that uh, constant or did I remove it I think I just defined as constant for that anyway sp process is one pretty maybe I defined it as a field instead I think we lost the stream for a moment. So uh, let me know if uh, I think I got disconnected for a moment. Uh, so let me know if you can now hear me and see me again while I'm trying to figure out uh, what's going on here. So yeah, so um, where were we? Uh, yeah, we had those two stack pointers and now we can uh, define getters for them. Okay, looks good. Okay, perfect. Uh, SP process. So now for get SP process, we are checking if these dot sp cell actually we can just define them as uh, false and true so they will match the values of sp cell or maybe yeah I guess um, the, it will be best to use just to use an enum here enum uh, uh, stack pointer or maybe stack pointer bank, which is either SP main or SP process. And then good, uh, thanks for the feedback. And then we can say that this one is just a stack pointer bank and default is uh, the SP main. Maybe without the underscore, it's not very TypeScript to use an underscore. Cool. And then uh, we can like uh, create this logic that would uh, first of all uh, stack. So if this dot sp cell is not equal to the current stack, then we just uh, flip them. So dot sp cell is a stack this dot um, this dot registers sp right there is oh this dot sp just this dot sp which returns registers at 13 cool and then const um, or maybe no, I think that would make sense. Um, there, there are probably places where we access registers by index. So yeah, so I guess uh, just like um, doing the banging uh, when we switch stack pointers would be the best. All right. Thanks. Um, yeah, so, um, so, uh, this dot, uh, bank this dot sp. So basically we just exchange, exchange between, uh, the, uh, between those, uh, stack pointers whenever we want to, uh, switch. Uh, why doesn't it like that? This is a number. Oh, it shouldn't be read only. Right, cool. All right.
right. Cool. So we now have this uh, thing that can uh, switch stack, switches does just one stack, uh, which seems good. And then instead of doing this, we can just uh, switch stack to the uh, SP main dot main. Don't need that comment. I think uh, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. Uh, all right, so. We have those uh, code, this kind of code right to SP process and the SP main. So let's implement them as well. So this dot SP process. So if this does the SP cell, then uh, we return um, is SP uh, stack pointer dot uh, SP process then the return dot this dot SP otherwise maybe we'll call it banked SP because I think it makes more sense this way uh, yeah it should be a question mark and then the same for SP main so if it's SP main then basically the same logic and let's create setters for them as well. So set SP process value number. And then uh, if this dot SP cell is uh, the SP process, then this dot SP equals value else this dot banked SP equals value. And this is just to make sure that uh, this is uh, unsigned. No. Yeah, to make sure it stays unsigned. Uh, we don't need it for the SP because it's writing to um, registers and registers is unsigned int array. But here it's just uh, like a JavaScript variable. It's not a typed array. So we need to make sure that um, it doesn't get uh, signed in the way and then a setter for SP main which does the same just uh, with the reverse logic and now we can probably do this cons this is this dot SP process and then this dot SP process equals this dot SP process Okay, so yeah, so then it's just it becomes now that we have those pointers, it becomes really easy to write all this code. Um, yeah, and now, uh, wait a second, are we doing anything with those variables? Yeah, we don't need to redefine it because we already did define it here. Uh, all right, so I think it seems like other than this uh, set event register, we are pretty good with uh, exception entry. It's implemented. I'm not sure if it's working yet. And uh, it's not exception taken now. Now it's exception entry. And we may have the first part of exceptions, but before we uh, dive into testing it, let's just uh, implement those k uh, getters and setters for the stack pointer so sp main uh, i'm pretty sure we had one value for the uh, msp's main stack pointer i think return the, this dot sp main and then PSP is probably the process stack pointer. So SP process. And we have all of those which we haven't implemented yet. I'm not sure if anybody's using it. So I'm not like those uh, other uh, combinations. So I'm not going to implement them. Rather, I'm going to implement. Oh, one more thing. If this dot SP cell equals uh, stack pointer. It will probably still work this way which, because like the first um, value here is probably zero, but this is a bit more readable. Cool. And now let's do write spatial register. And we have to be a bit careful here. So um, 
if we are writing a value number, if we are writing to uh, this register, then uh, we are just putting here this this value. We already got those setters, I think, from the uh, GDB. We, we were working on the GDB connection. And this.pm is a value and one. And we want to convert that into Boolean. That's the proper way or the standard way, I guess, to do it in JavaScript. And uh, just assigning to SP main break. Same goes with SP process. But here we have to be a little bit more careful. We can say this dot and priv and the same logic. But instead of writing to uh, SP cell, um, we need to um, use this dot uh, sweet stack and then uh, tell it which bank we want to use. So if value and two, then uh, that's the uh, SP process. Otherwise, that's the main process, the SP main. Cool. And then uh, now all we need to do is just, uh, that's MSR, just call this uh, read spatial here. So this dot, um, write spatial register and then we need i guess it's the same encoding we'll double check that in a moment because there is like a bit of a difference between those uh, but uh, let's assume for a moment it is dot rd then Okay, let's double uh, check that we are uh, decoding it correctly. Oh, and before updating the PC. Um, so see how we got uh, MSR, by the way. We did it. Okay, so uh, move spatial to spatial register MSR. Yeah, I think uh, sysm is being read from the same uh, register, but then uh, the uh, rn is being read uh, differently. Let's see. So yeah, here they are like, uh, it's rd. So sysm is in the same position, but the register here, it's like in the second part. And here it's in the first part. So there is a difference in the decoding. So the R, first of all, it's not RD now, it's RN, RN, and uh, it's opcode and yeah, the lowest uh, four bits. Cool. Um, yeah, and there is like a thing with the privileged mode. Uh, let's see what does this does. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, we should probably implement that at some point, but not now. All right, so we have MRS, MSR. Um, let's add a test case for MSR though. Because it's untested yet okay why do we have so many windows here yep okay so mrs and let's do just the opposite msr ipsr r0 or how does it go msr backrug rn yeah um all right msr and then this one get, yeah. Actually, let's do it with uh, something more interesting like the, let's write to SP main. So SP main is like, uh, actually it's better to look here to make sure we didn't, yeah, that should be eight. So yeah, we are going to write R0 to eight. And then we can say that R0 has uh, 
one, two, three, four, whatever. Let's make it hexa. And then after executing this instruction, we expect uh, rp.sp. It's the mind stack, so it should save it to equal uh, one, two, three, four. And it's green, perfect. So we now uh, have this test case. Let's just focus on this one. And we know that uh, it has been decoded and it wrote to uh, the, the correct position. So uh, to the SP, uh, to the active stack pointer. And um, yeah, I, I don't even remember why we started implementing interrupts if there was like a specific reason or not. But um, let's continue, it's fun. All right, so uh, I think we had this note to, um, so uh, Pintia is asking in, Pinti, Pintia, I don't know if I pronounce your name correctly, is asking in the chat how much of the Pico functionality we have emulated so far. So it's hard to tell. I mean, I think we implemented most of the ARM v6 instructions, uh, but we still have uh, all those peripherals to work on. And I think uh, so far we worked on it uh, until up to the stream 30 hours. And I would say we are halfway through to get a um, pretty decent emulation, like uh, something that would probably run uh, most of the common programs, but maybe I'm too optimistic. The only way to know is, you know, to keep doing it until we get to the point where we say, where, way, uh, way, wow, this is working. Um, so it's hard to tell. Anyway, so what is this BX right PC? I think uh, we need to, we wanted to take a look at that. So if current mode and this, then we call exception return. Otherwise, what is the SPR.T? Oh, it's, uh, it's like uh, thumb mode probably. Um, cool. So uh, I think BLX, BX right PC. So uh, I guess in, we need to implement that inside uh, the BX instruction. Here we don't have this problem, but here we do. Let's see who calls BX write PC. Also load write PC. Okay. So yeah, so BX calls it. And probably that's it, right? Yeah, and let's see who calls load write PC. Hmm, interesting. So also the pop instruction. Uh, so this is probably pop. Yeah. So we should look, take a look at both instructions, uh, BX and uh, pop and see if they implement this logic. Right now they don't. You see, they just write to PC and let's see what's going on with pop. Uh, if opcode Da, 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 da. Registers 14. What is registers 14? Um, I don't think our Pope can write to PC. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, we had this BX right load right PC, which was mentioned inside pop. Register is 15, but I guess register is 15 can't be one because it's, yeah, and the PC. So it can load a PC if the register is the word PC. So that's, oh, P is PC. And how did we implement that? So I guess, first of all, uh, what's going on here? Oh, code. Maybe we can call this, so shift it P to make it a bit more uh, easy to understand what's going on here. 
Oh yeah, we are writing here to PC. I can see that. So instead of uh, writing to PC directly, radio in 32 address and what, what, oh, this is like the return address. What is, what, why are we writing this? What is that? What is that in the pseudocode? No, oh, just like, I don't know what is this line? This like covered by the test or something like that? I guess it is, so let's see. Uh, pop. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what this line does. I don't think we need it. Why would we want to write back to that there is only reading here? I don't see any. Yeah, I don't see any reason to write to the memory. And if you remove it, the test still passes. So if you see any reason for like this line, let me know. I think it shouldn't be here. And um, now instead of like changing PC directly, let's call this dot uh, BX write. That was BX write PC, right? Oh, right PC is just uh, BX write PC. Uh, and then this fill here. Cool. And then also in BX, we can use it. Uh, All right, and then we can implement this method that can return from exception. Okay, so bx write pc value number. So this is just so we have the same behavior as we had so far. Yeah, all is green, great. Um, and then let's take a look at BX right PC because there is also this. We did this probably, I guess, branch to probably writes to PC. Yeah, just writing to PC. Um, yeah, but we have this spatial condition. So if, uh, yeah, if this dot current mode I guess equals what is the type of this execution mode dot handler and uh, the highest bit of address equal so these are like bits we need to shift by 28 and let's instead of value call this address just to be more consistent yeah, and those bits are this, then else. Okay, and then we need to exception return with the lower bits of the address. Um, yeah, this dot exception return and address, and we need just the clear the top uh, four bits so that should do the trick let's implement exception return and uh, it does make sense now exception return address is a number okay so what does exception return do uh yeah let's just copy paste it and do whatever okay so who yeah okay we know that a current mode is mode handler we don't need to assert i mean that's the uh if not is one then unpredictable okay unpredictable doesn't uh, is not uh, interesting because uh, returning exception numbers is just this dot ipsr cool um okay we'll take a look at that in the mo in a moment what is exception active okay it's 
unpredictable. It's not interesting right now. What is exe return? Whew, whoa. There is like a lot of if then else. Okay, so there are like, we need to figure out what is this exe return. Uh, da, 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 da. Unpredictable, not interesting. And then not interesting. Otherwise, we do this. Otherwise, illegal return. Okay. Then we have deactivate pop stack. Unpredictable, unpredictable, not interesting. Yeah, set event doesn't, we don't need that. Uh, I guess we don't need this as well. So we still need to figure out this like uh, exe return. Where does it come from? Oh, exe return is like, uh, it's not, it's exe return, it's not address. Okay. And then we just look at the lowest four bits. So switch and uh, lowest four bits. And yeah, let's just make sure it's no, it should always be signed if we are doing bitwise and for the lowest four bits. Okay, so case. Cool. Uh, this dot current mode is execution mode dot cool. And what are we doing with this frame PTR? Oh, it's used by uh, Popstack led frame. PDR is uh, SP main is like the common one. So that's the only different one. Uh, uh, this dot SP process. Cool. And then uh, this dot switch stack. Uh, we are switching to stack pointer one main, right? speed cell zero is switching to main this is switching to main and this is switching to sp process and what is this thing oh there is I'm not sure. Uh, assigning current mode to mod thread causes a dropping privilege if control dot pre and previous set to one. So I guess this means that we should. Um, but here it doesn't say that. Let's see if this is mentioned ever anywhere somewhere else. Yeah, it seems like there can be a case uh, specifically in the activate where uh, npriv where the mode can be threatened and priv can be one. So I'm not sure and this is commented out. Anyway, let's keep this comment here just because we are not sure what it does. So one day uh, we'll be able, when we encounter a bug, we'll be able to get back to here and say, huh, we knew that there is something wrong about this, but right now we probably don't need to worry about that too much. Cool. And I guess we don't need this nested activation because 
we don't use it as well as returning. Oh, we do need a returning exception number for uh, deactivate. Let's make this one a bit more JavaScripty. Okay, and then we need to implement uh, the activate and pop stack. So what does this deactivate do? Well, first of all, let's check if we where do we use nested activation only just for those unpredictable. So yeah, so I guess we don't need that right now. And then Cool. And then uh, da, 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 da. conceptual, probably, yeah, probably not something we should uh, care about too much. Let's see what does deactivate do. Oh, it doesn't seem to do a lot just writes to exception active. And I think we don't really need to use this exception active uh, is a conceptual array. Um, conceptual probably means we don't really need to implement that. I uh, just uh, like conceptual. Okay, so we probably don't need to implement the deactivate as well. Because yeah, it doesn't do anything. So we can just remove it and then we can also remove this cool and then we just need to implement pop stack right so it's probably the opposite of this uh where we, did we have that push stack yeah uh, push stack so exception entry so that's probably the opposite of that one all right let's do that So this is pop stack. All right. Um, yeah, we are reading those registers. And we need to read you in 32. So all of those are going to be these dot right. What happened here? These dot registers is these dot read you in 32 from uh, those addresses and we change frame PTR to have uh, uppercase P. Yeah, let's also change it later in uh, push stack to be consistent and this dot LR is same thing plus 14 hexa 14 this dot PC. 18 and what is PSR? Guess who? What is that? Yeah, we need to break it down. We'll do it in a moment. So const PSR is this dot read u in 32 frame PDR plus one C. And then um, these dot xpsr is just psr and without that specific bit. And what is that frame PDR line? Where did that come from? Uh, we don't need that branch to PC. Okay, uh, where did that come from? Uh, da, 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 frame PTR align. Do we use it? I guess we can just say this dot XP. Well, this and uh, let's hope this will be fine. I didn't know if we need this uh, frame PTR align. Do we take a look at that? take a look at a different bit 
PSR. Okay, interesting. Um, okay, switch. And where do we have exe return here? Like this pub stack? Oh, it gets exe return as well. So, uh, just like here, we're taking a look at the lower four bits and then deciding what to do based on that. So. Oh yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. What is force thread like? Oh, I guess I see this. Da, 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 da. Okay, we'll do it in a moment. So yeah, let's just assign it into PSR and then just implement the logic that we have below. So uh, case this then pull this dot sp main then this dot oh yeah we do have this uh, psr9 um yeah okay so let's do it uh const how do we call that uh, psr9 we called it here um, frame align and it's just uh, checking this uh, specific bit. Um, frame PTR align. So const frame PTR align is if PSR and uh, that's bit number nine. Right, so we can do instead of this happiness or frame PTR line, and then we can just say that if this is true, then this, otherwise, this. Let's see that. Let's make sure this is consistent. Yeah, it seems to be uh, consistent. Um, yeah, actually. Okay, uh, all right, so what else do we have here? Um, so yeah, we did that, and now we do this.apsr equals psr and just take the high highest four bits. Yeah, that's good. And no, we don't need that comment. It's pretty much self-explanatory. Force thread. Yeah. So this entire, like the, um, the past session, the uh, last half of the uh, past session is just uh, copy pasting basically from the data sheet, and just you know making the code translating uh, from. Uh, uh, pseudocode to JavaScript, and now we can say uh, these dot IPSR equals these dot uh, for thread is zero, otherwise BSR and uh, 3F, right? Six bits. Okay, we loaded that. What is EPSR? Do we have it? We don't. EPSR.t. EPSR 24. That's the thumb bit. Uh, yeah, it should always be one. So we can just ignore this. I mean, it's a conceptual bit, like the conceptual array. Anyway, I think uh, we don't need it, this other stuff as well. 
um, but I still see some red uh, markers here. Let's see what's wrong. Oh, hmm. we don't need this. Okay. And and let's see what else oh i forgot to close parentheses okay cool so now we have um exception entry and exception return and conceptually uh we we have interrupts implemented uh, we need to check it but first of all just make it a bit more camel casey it will make me feel better cool Cool, cool, cool. And here as well, frame PTR align. And let's double check this magic value. Yeah, it seems seems legit. All right, so we got exceptions and I have no idea what we're doing next. Maybe, you know, just run the, uh, oh, uh, um, yeah, Valeria is saying uh, to check uh, line 538, what's that? Uh, is not sure we have to update the all ASPR, uh, APSR. If I'm not mistaken, APSR itself, you see like uh, it's in, in this specific time implementation, it's only like those four bits. So it doesn't really matter. I, I actually uh, could even make it easier and just assign PSR to it. Uh, just, I mean, that, that this is not really required. It's just to stay more consistent with the pseudocode in the data sheet. But uh, yeah, only those. Uh, so in theory, that's right. We If we didn't know anything about uh, APSR, we should have like only updated those bits and kept those intact. But since we know how it's implemented, we can uh, do what we did. But that's a good note. And thanks Valerio for paying attention. And now let's start and see if our program still runs. I don't even, yeah, it seems to still run. Yep. Um, yeah, cool. It still works. Nice. All right. Um, yeah, we have, uh, we have uh, interrupts. Now, I know we could write a test case for interrupts, but I'm not sure how I would go about this. Like, uh, there is a lot of logic here. Um, I mean, do we have... Uh, Let's see, there is exception entry, exception return, and check for interrupts that would cause exception entry to be called. Um, where do we, when do we call check for interrupts? Oh, so whenever there is this dot interrupts updated and who sets interrupts updated? Uh, whenever IPSR, ISPR is changed. All right. And also, yeah, like whenever the interrupt priorities are updated. And yes, we don't need this console log. We used it for debugging, so we can remove it, remove it. And I guess after checking for interrupts, uh, if we find we don't find anything, we can say this dot interrupts updated is false, so it won't be checked repeatedly. Um, all right. Uh, so yeah, I, I guess we should commit it for now, and then when we get to a place where we actually need to use interrupts, uh, which will probably be pretty soon, we will also uh, think about how to test that. I mean, there is uh, most of the logic is just like pushing and popping things from the stack. So we could probably test just uh, that exception entry, calling exception entry, and then calling exception return. Um, yeah. 
uh, yeah, these are probably those uh, bits that uh, here we are like when the yeah one nine and D. So that's one nine and probably D. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, we can probably try to do something like that and check that the values are restored. Um, but there, there is all this. Uh, changing of stacks and yeah let, let's do a quick sanity just uh you know to check to make sure that um what are all these tests these are the instructions and then we have all these okay describe exception entry and exception exit return Uh, it should uh, preserve the values of uh, our zero or one. Uh, what else? Zero, one, R twelve. All right. So let's try uh, to do this. So. Uh, we have a new RP and then we can say um, RP2040 dot. Yeah, let's just set a pending interrupt uh, and then we can say R2040 dot uh, interrupts update this is true. RP2040 dot execute instruction. And then at this point, uh, it should go to the interrupt handler. So let's set up the app. Uh, RP2040 dot uh, write uh, set write spatial register, or maybe we can do something like, I mean, I want to set or huh. yeah, there is this Vitor, uh, and we want to set Vitor, yeah. We want to set Vitor to the offset of the vector table. So write um, mint 32. And is there like any test with Vitor? Vitor. And let's have a constant for that. Const Vitor is, where is this Vitor? Is there like, I think it's here, Vitor. Yeah, it's this plus something. We are this plus this. Seems legit. So let's first of all write here this like uh, value of the beginning of the flash that would be the vector address table and then uh, that's interrupt one so rp2040 write u in 32 at this point plus 16 plus one i think that's how the uh interrupt and i think that's how that works like uh the uh, Vitor plus 16, where is that? Vector table offset. Where is the, the thing about uh, how the <coughs> interrupts work? Exceptions, yeah, that sounds about correct. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, interrupt where is that i remember we had it like where the interrupts are uh uh like how this this vector 
EAC. How this NVIC is laid out. I think we had this uh, practical guide, which also, oh yeah, that's, that's the table I was looking for. V14. So yeah, external interrupt uh, numbers n is 16 plus n so 16 plus 1 and then let's write the imaginary address of the handler let's give it a name const uh, int1 handler and let's say it's a this address no that's the vector table let's say it's here so so now uh, after executing the instruction we expect uh, rp2040 dot uh, pc to equal to this uh, int1 handler and yeah it equals two interesting so either something here is wrong or something here is wrong uh, I guess it's it should be equal well, let's go to the code and see what's going on I guess it should be equal to int1 handler plus two, plus two because it also executed one instruction from the uh, interrupt uh, handler. Um, let's actually uh, put some meaningful instruction there. Arc 2040, write you in 32 at int1 handler. And let's uh, inst uh, move. Which instructions do we have opcode? move or uh, there is like uh, uh, some opcode to there was a way to move a value into register right uh, ldi maybe um there is some way to load a value into a register, if I'm not mistaken. I just don't remember um, what is that instruction. What is MVNS or there must be a way. Oh, moves. Okay. Moves. Uh, yeah. And we don't have. Uh, yeah, probably we, we are missing. Let's do that. Let's create. Uh, encoding for that uh, move so moves and how does moves work moves rdimm8 imm8 good and then this is the prefix shifted by 11 and then we have uh, rd and imm8 so rd shifted by rd is like three bits so rd shifted by eight and three bits and then uh, imm8 good Okay, and now let's just use this in the test case, R5, uh, 128. Uh, let's just import it. Move this, yep. Yeah, still passes, good. And now we can use it in the test to make sure that this instruction has been executed. Let's move this value uh, 55 hexa into R5, R0. And then we also expect R0 to equal this. Let's just uh, give it an initial value, uh, rp2040.registers R0. Let's say it's 44 at the beginning and then when we return from the exception we can assert that it still has like uh, that registers are zero it still has like the correct uh, values value actually it should do this test uh, test uh, um, 
Okay, we'll name it after we finish writing it. But first of all, let's find out why it doesn't work while like it should. Let's see what's going on, if it's a bug in the test or a bug in the code. So uh, let's focus on this one and we have this execute instruction. And yeah, it's interrupt update. It goes to check for interrupts and then, oh, yeah. Uh, it doesn't execute the handler. Uh, why is that? Um, pending interrupt. That's yeah. Probably we need to also enable this interrupt. Dot enable interrupt this. And did it change anything? Yep. Now it goes into the exception entry. Uh, yeah, but we still get uh, incorrect PC. Let's go into exception entry and try to track this down. So this is executed. We go to the else writing and then we are reading from vector table. Oh yeah. This should be multiplied by four. Okay, because it's like uh, four bytes per entry. Okay, uh, let's first of all see what the exception number here is. Um, 16. Huh? This shouldn't be 16, I guess, if it's interrupt number. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Is interrupt number zero if we set a bit? Let's make it int one. Int one const int one is just one shifted by one. Okay, cool. And okay, this is green. This is good. It means that uh, it jumped to the right uh, location and it executed this opcode. And now, um, Actually, we can uh, encode another instruction. Uh, next instruction, we can encode uh, opcode bx with um, lr, I guess. And then if we execute another instruction, that should be bxlr, that should be uh, moves R055. Uh, then at this point, it should have uh, returned from the interrupt, and then R0 should have been restored for 244 if it should have been. Uh, but yeah, it wasn't. Let's see why exception return wasn't executed. And let's see if we did uh, go into BX. We did. We went. Wait a second, let's focus on this one. Now we don't go into BX. Why is that? Uh, interesting. So, wait a moment. First of all, this is 16 bits, right? And BX is also 16 bits. Maybe that's the problem. Guess not. Um, and yeah, at this point, the uh, execution should have returned to the original PC. So let's set the original PC to somewhere, let's say here. And then we accept, expect uh, rp2040.pc to equal Oh, wait a moment. Shouldn't, yeah, now it makes sense after returning from the exception. But for some reason, it didn't uh, quite return from the exception. Like, uh, I guess we can see that moves was executed, but the instruction following that, which is this one, wasn't. What's the reason for that? Um, Let's console log RP twenty 
40 PC to string 16. I have a suspect. Yeah, um, it seems like it executed. Uh, it re-entered the interrupt. Let me check that. I think it just uh, executed the interrupt again in this case. Um, so something is wrong, but let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, you can see like it logged the value twice, which means uh, it re-entered the uh, interrupt handler. So I think we are missing something in check for interrupts. Uh, let's see in the data sheet, there is probably like uh, something that false exception entry. entry. Exception mm -hmm. entry. Okay. Interesting. I don't see anything that calls this uh, that is related to interrupts, but let's look for this code. Where did we copy that from? Okay, so we have this uh, execution priority. I mask dot pm. Oh, there is like execution priority, and then what is calling that? That's validate address. Okay. Application exception priority, the priority of each exception. Uh, what is this PM? Do we? I don't think we touch it anywhere. I mean, I think we only read it. We don't really write it. But yeah, there there is uh, th there should be some mechanism that makes sure that uh, the interrupt isn't executed again while. Uh, the exception handler is running and I think that's one thing we are missing so it's good that we have the test now we should the highest priority uh, setting the B it raises the execution priority to zero this prevents an exception from activating fault to right uh, implicit lowest priority. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, we have this execution priority, but what do we do with this? Uh, da, 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 da. We don't seem to do a lot with this sort of function. Just this. Okay. Do we like save it somewhere or lower? Okay, we know that. Multiple have the same priority with the lowest exception. Okay. When an exception is active, only exception with a higher priority can preempt it. Um, so yeah, I don't see that. Uh, Let's look for the word priority. There is like a way, uh, a built in way to store the priority uh, of the currently running exception. Um, but we should probably do it because it's part of the logic here, right? Yeah, the word priority appears too many times. So if anyone knows, uh, if there is a register or something that holds the current priority, then let me know. Otherwise, we will just create a variable to do that for now. I mean, we can always change that if we find out there is such a, such an uh, a register. Okay, so let's. Um, Uh, yeah, there is no like 
priority. Um, IBSR is like the currently running exception. So yeah, we, we can probably uh, yeah, we can probably calculate a priority on the fly from IPSR. So um, let's create a method that does that. And then we don't have to save it uh, and manage that value. So we have that uh, interrupt priority, check for interrupt. So uh, let's make another exception priority. Uh, exception number and then uh, switch and let's just call it n because and then we can uh, do this probably reset is no reset is one is there like uh, constants for that or should we create Exception reset. Yeah, we had this table here. Uh, reset is one. Const x uh, nmi is two. Const x hard fold is three. Uh, const x. Then, know if we still need the uh, exception priority. All right. So if we have a reset, x reset minus three x nmi minus 2 x hard fold is minus 1 and then we had those uh append sv and sv call case x sv call is what is that we'll take a look at that in a moment but x sv call is uh, 11 right and then return this and then case x uh, and as we return this which I still don't know what's that case uh, cystic that's the ARM built-in timer, the cystic timer, which we still haven't implemented, but now we have this priority and we need to add those constants as well. So X pence V is 14 and X cystic is 15. Oh, suddenly things are looking greener than they used to be. Okay, now let's see what is that. Uh, Maybe this is not even relevant. Oh, there is system handler priority register. It it exists. There is some, such a thing. It's here. Um, and it has, okay. So we just need to read from this register basically. Um, okay. So let's define a constant for that. Uh, we had for Vitar const offset of shpr2 and there is also shpr3 okay shpr3 is here good um that's in the ppb base so uh const shpr2 equals uh, this radio in 32 uh, and ppb base plus shpr2 then there is also this thing for shpr3 and then we just need to return the right bit so uh, for this one it's just like the highest two bits so basically shpr2 shifted by uh, 30 and here for the cystic it's again the uh, those two bits so 
shbr3 shifted by 30 and here oh it doesn't like the fact that i'm using the same yeah we can actually just it already says here shbr2 uh okay return this so three shifted by 30. okay so um in this case uh, da, 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 priority pandas v that's uh bits 32 to 33. so uh, we'll just uh shift it by 20 24 no we'll shift it by 22 and then um bitwise end it with three to get those two bits and then otherwise uh if n is greater than 16 or greater or equal then that's an interrupt and we should uh, find the priority of that interrupt we'll do it in a moment um else we just uh return I guess four, which is like the highest priority level. It means that we are just, uh, maybe there is even, uh, it's defined level. I mean, yeah, it's probably, oh, that's not the right data sheet priority four level four. Yeah, I guess it's like the, the highest priority is four. So we can say uh, if we don't know which priority or level we are running it, it's probably the highest one, which is four, or the lowest one, which is four. And uh, we don't need all of that uh, things because we already are, yeah, we already got it covered above. Um, cool. And then uh, we can do something like that. Um, so first of all, we need to find a priority level of the current interrupt. So uh, we can do it by uh, probably, we can use this. Level interrupts. What is level? Oh, yeah, we have like uh, interrupt priorities. So if interrupt priorities at FF zero and const int num is n minus 16, then it's zero. You can probably do a for loop i less than 4i plus plus so if the bit is set in the array with a priority level for this value maybe we'll call it priority so if this uh, interrupt bit is set then return the priority maybe we'll do it the other way around if n is less than 16 return 4 Otherwise, we have this uh, amazing for loop here. And if we don't find anything, then uh, we return four. And maybe const lowest priority is four. And then we can uh, return this. lowest priority lowest priority and now when we now we can execute uh, calculate the current uh, exception priority so uh, const current priority is just this dot exception priority this dot ipsr now if uh, we are not executing an exception then ipsr will be zero and then we'll just uh, return the lowest priority which is uh, 16 uh, which is four 
And then we can do this instead of running this loop um, to uh, like up to four, we can just run it. Uh, so it goes up to the current priority. So we only check higher priority interrupts. We don't check uh, any interrupts in the current priority or lower one. And it still doesn't work. Let's see if this is still executed twice. Uh, that was uh, exception entry. Just print this value to see if this is, yeah, I, I, I only see one print. So it's executed once, but exception return is still not happening. Let's say if uh, BX is now, yeah, BX is now executed, which is a good sign. We got somewhere. Our uh, interrupt masking helped. Oh, yeah, maybe if we are already there, before we check this, we can also implement this uh, prime mask thing that uh, I think we have this PM bit. Yeah, so um, I think it said that uh, if prime mask uh, dot PM is set to one, then um, it means that uh, the current priority is like uh, zero. So yeah, guess that's uh, what execution priority does. Um, it returns the uh, highest priority. So basically, uh, or did we have that uh, interrupt check for interrupts? Yeah, so uh, we can say uh, if this.pm, then it's zero, otherwise it's this does, or maybe we can do something like that. Uh, so if this.pm, Turn zero. Um, yeah, but those ones are lower than zero. Um, we can do maybe. Uh, So the minimum between this and this.pm is zero, otherwise it's a lowest priority. Let's make lowest priority just a <coughs> global constant. Lowest uh, possible exception priority. Okay. Then if, if PM is true, then the uh, current priority will be uh, bounded. Well, I mean, the maximum priority, uh, uh, the, the current priority will be uh, zero or less. Otherwise it will be the lowest priority. It will be the value of exception priority basically. Cool. Um, all right, so uh, now let's see what's happened with this BX right PC. So something here didn't, um, one of those conditions didn't, uh, didn't work. Let's first of all, see the value of this. Print anything, this is true. You can, if I scroll, you will see it's true. So this is true. And I guess then this is false. Let's see why. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. What's the value of this? False, yeah, this is false. Let's print the value of address. Hmm, it shouldn't be false. Oh, wait a moment. I'm doing 
Mm. I should have done an unsigned shift. Otherwise, I will get a negative number because the uh, uh, the MSB is set. Okay, cool. So now I can see it goes into exception return. And what happens here? Uh, we still got something. Uh, I mean, it executes everything. Uh, we can also assert that the IPSR equals to zero. It should have set it to zero probably. And then here uh, before uh, it should have been one. No, it should be 17, 16 plus one plus one. Maybe we'll call it, uh, no, we want to call, oh yes, const x int one is just 16 plus one, just exception of the int one. Okay, so yeah, so this should pass, but now PC is probably popped from the stack incorrectly. And I think the reason for that is we haven't set the stack pointer, or maybe we did set the stack pointer when we, um... yeah, there are like two stack pointers and I guess we just haven't initialized them. When we boot, we probably uh, in the constructor, we probably uh, set the stack pointer, no? Oh, we do it on reset, but yeah, we didn't stack the stack pointer. So let's set the stack pointer to, maybe we have this in uh, execute, how did we call it uh, in the demo? Emulator run, do we set the SP here? No. Yeah, anyway, let's just set the rp2040.sp is, let's say, I think that's the start of the ROM. So, oh, and now it's green. Now that we have a stack pointer, we could uh, save uh, um, the variables to the stack and then we should uh, return here. Uh, exception should return at this point. Okay handler okay and then exception handler should start at this point or yeah it starts here and it returns after the bxlr cool all right so uh yeah, uh, it should execute an exception and handler and return from it correctly. Yeah, and we, we do uh, we do have uh, a lot of tests here, uh, but I mean a lot of like assertions here. We we assert on the value of IPSR PC. Uh, we see, we, we check that the registers uh, were saved and restored. And I think it pretty much covers the basics. And I also think uh, it was valuable to write this uh, test case. It took us like, I don't know, uh, 20 or 30 minutes overall, but we did find uh, something uh, we missed in the original implementation. Uh, you can see we don't have a uh, full coverage yet because um, yeah, we don't really support this uh, execution mode. Um, but uh, just a moment, yep. But um, other than that, um, and yeah. Other than this, we are covering the basic functionality and I think that should be fine. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's commit. I think that's a good time for a commit. Uh, NVAC first working uh, interrupt implementation or I don't know if it's working. Uh, 
yeah, interrupt implementation. <laughs> uh, we have a single test, a simple test case that passes. So just, you know, run the program one more time to see that everything still runs. Yeah, hello, you are cool. Uh, we have a simple test case that passes, so it's hopefully correct. Okay, let's just take a quick look uh, at the changes that we did before we commit. Uh, so let's see. Yeah. So yeah, we have this new test case that we have just written, and uh, we also uh, what is that? Oh, we also added also implemented MSR. We also added uh, MSR on the test case for that. Uh, yeah. And these are just constants and imports. And here we added the opcode for moves. And then we have all this amazing new code that we wrote today. Lots of code, lots of changes. Uh, removing all those uh, console logs, refixing pop. Uh, and fixed BX pop to uh, support turning from exception. Yeah. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Bit of refactoring. Oh, MSR CPS IDs I CPS IEI. Cool. We also did that. Right. So it's starting to uh, get a shape. Uh, this huh, we can probably remove that funny comment. It can do a bit more than run blink right now. So it's probably from the very early days. Yeah, initial commit coded during a live stream. That's from the very first uh, stream. We don't need that comment anymore. We are uh, 1300 lines of code later. We don't need that. All right. Uh, we committed. We will push it. Just run the tests just because I don't know. I have nothing better to do while it's pushing. Uh, anyway, I think this is worthy of another uh, package release. Uh, and while at that, uh, I also want to... Uh, so we did that thing with the exports and I think that's pretty neat. But I remember that I had uh, for the uh, AVR simulator... Where is that? Here it is. Um, I also specified... Um, another um, entry, another like, yeah, this one, uh, which is for um, Webpack. I think Webpack looks, so Node.js looks at the exports, but if I'm not mistaken, Webpack looks at this. So, you know, let's just uh, add this as well. Uh, so uh, hopefully uh, it's actually MJS not TSM here, right? This, um, do we have a this tier? Do we even had? Oh, well, wait a moment. That's also a mistake. It's called ESM, not MJS. So I wonder how it have probably never worked anyway. Um, yeah. All right. So uh, let's also fix that. Um, entry point for Webpack. Module entry point for Webpack. Yeah, so that's this ESM, right? ESM, yep. Cool. All right. And let's commit that as well. And let's publish with the interrupts. All right. And I think next I would love to. Um, I don't know. Uh, we have this. Um, did did 
I don't remember if we managed to run. We had this like uh, hello serial. Did it work? It didn't. Didn't it work? We also have this blink, which is probably a bit older. Uh, but wait a moment. Let's wait for the package to publish before uh, we find that out. And here we can remove this, and we don't need interrupts. We did them. It's so uh, nice to remove things from the checklist. What is this CFG? Uh, yeah, all right, probably something that we added last time. Yes, all right, and I think we can say uh, it adds a new feature in VAC, so we can uh, bump the minor version. It's not like just a bug fix, it actually adds something new. Um, and uh, right now, I think our, uh, there are probably a few more missing instructions that are rarely used. I don't know. Uh, let's see if there is a quick way to find out about, um, yeah, about the instructions. Um, that would be the number of instructions. So we can have like. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, there is like 77 different instructions in the data sheet. And how many do we have? I think we have, uh, oh, it says it's published. That was quick. Uh, and it also open. oh yes, it just did. Uh, opened a new window with the release notes. So to create the uh, GitHub tag, so Let's also create a release on GitHub. Great release just now. Um, and yes, so uh, we said that looking at the data sheet, we said we had like uh, around uh, 77 instructions to implement. And let's see how many we have. I think we counted last time and we had like uh, 60 something uh, instruction. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can just probably look for all those. How many of those do we have? We have uh, 74 selections. So we pretty much have most of it covered. Like we are probably missing something like uh, pre instructions. Maybe, I don't know, maybe there is like some duplicate. Yeah, there is some duplicate uh, here. It's not maybe this will be a better indication of no um maybe just else looking for this so we have 68 of those and probably missing the first one or something like that so yeah 68 plus this one so 69 out of 77 it means like we have eight more instructions we haven't implemented yet probably not very common but it's almost did we implement cpy for instance oh it's not really instruction it's just a synonym so minus one anyway uh i don't know there might be a, a few more synonyms or something like that uh so we are pretty good in terms of implementing instructions we got most of them covered that's pretty makes me pretty happy as well as most of the uh, interrupt controller so i think with the arm itself we are almost done we still have like this cystic timer and a few more things to prob that we probably missed in this enormous data sheet all those uh exceptions like those uh there was this uh, pandas v uh, exception that we may have to implement at some point but we have the mechanism which is great all right so uh let's go back for a moment and see what's what's up with this low serial uh is it like working or what happens there I don't know. I think we started doing the interrupts for it, but it seems to be working. It's printing a low world every second or so. So I don't think we have a lot of uh, work here. We still have to do some GPIO. Uh, let's check what's up with, we have this blink. What's going on with this blink? 
So yeah, so Blink is doing uh, interesting stuff. It seems to be stuck somewhere. Well, what is this Blink anyway? It's from a few days ago. I don't know, but I don't think we don't have an L file for that. So I don't know. Uh, it, it seems to go wrong because it gets to this strange opcode. I don't know what happens here. Anyway, uh, there is something else I want to try today. And um, so I think I have it here. Yeah, I built, uh, I told you last week about this uh, Raspberry Pi core for uh, Arduino. Yeah, which is based on uh, embed an operating system from R. Um, and uh, I installed it in uh, in my Arduino CLI, and now uh, I I used it to compile Blink. So that's Arduino Blink. It's not like uh, if we take a look at the source code, it's like totally Arduino Blink. Maybe you don't need this actually LED built in. I don't know. I think one is not the correct number for Raspberry Pi, and it should probably be defined anyway. Let's recompile that. Yep. So recompiled it. And yes, you can see there is like this uh, very standard link program of Arduino. It's not Pico specific, it's Arduino code. And I compiled it with the Arduino CLI. And now I got those. Um, where is this CLS that I had? Yeah, I got those uh, files, those health L elf and hex files that uh, I can use to try to write it in the emulator. So let's try it. Uh, copying this file here. Oh, it's inside here at blink. Actually, let's also copy the he he the elf file. So next time we won't have to wonder about its whereabouts. Did I copy it to the wrong? Oh, RP2040JS. Yeah, now it should appear here. Yep, we can see it, the L file. Let's also git ignore it because we don't want to commit it by mistake. And let's link.ino. Let's try to run the Arduino blink on the simulator and see what happens. Mm. And then we can probably, if it works, it probably won't because that's life. But if it will, we can probably move to implementing GPIO or the uh, alarms for the timer. Okay, are you ready for this? Ready, set, let's run it and see what happens. Yep, uh, it seems to do strange things. What is that? Why is it ringing from this invalid memory address? No, only GDB to the rescue. So let's stop executing and let's uh, start a GDB session. Uh, GDB multi arch uh, minus um, x uh, load or is it file? I never remember. Load this L file. Uh, target remote win host 333. It's connected and interesting. Oh, that's all those is like GDB doing stuff. Uh, that's why we get those invalid reads, but it's in flash binary start. And let's continue and see where did we end up? Okay, we are in nowhere. Interesting what happened here. I have no idea. Um, and it seems like uh, the symbols are not. That's like uh, boot from somewhere 2e. Okay, let's try that again. Let's restart that. Remote debugging and let's switch to assembly layout and you know just execute it instruction by instruction. Yeah. So let's see. So instead of like, uh, so that's the bootloader basically. And where does the bootloader go? I think the bootloader, let's see, 
think we, 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 we were here before. This is probably CRT0, the bootloader, right? Or maybe not. The reset handlers. Uh, da, 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 da. There, there is a map file though that we can uh, take a look at. Um, uh, RP20P, RP2040JS. map file and now we can probably oh it's just map file it doesn't contain assembly listing just uh, the positions the locations of all the functions and there are many many functions here so it's not helpful anyway um Yeah, what's going on here? So we have this um, flash binary start, and then we have those vectors right after. And then so the first vector should be the reset handler, probably. Uh, Interesting. It says vectors, but it doesn't look like vectors. It looks like code. Hmm. No idea what's going on here. Um, oh, there is reset handler. Let's try to see if we can get to entry point, which leads to reset handler. And then recent handler does this data cpy old non core zero in boot rom init okay let's try to set a breakpoint in recent handler and see if we get there we don't strange yeah now we are like nobody knows where anyway i think this is a good uh time to um try to do what we did at the beginning which is just uh, printing the addresses of like instructions for instance instruction to try to figure out where this goes wrong okay it seems to be moving to the boot room or something like that uh let's print that to file okay and now we can take a look at blink output to see what's going on so we can see it goes here and then it goes to zero interesting okay yeah i mean this doesn't make a lot of sense to me why it would go to zero from this address? What do we have there? Um, oh yeah, I wanted to run it with GDB. So let's remove this console log that we just added. Right, and then uh, G we can stop this. Stop, go away. And yeah, let's start it with plain gdp connect it with gdp and then uh this assembly uh, all right and we said here there is like pop uh, and then there is another prop but we didn't push anything it seems like something is wrong because we have this code that doesn't make a lot of sense. And then when we looked at vectors, uh, we, we have also seen code that doesn't make sense. I mean, it seems like there is a bunch of code here instead of, um, this one does make sense. I don't know, 
like this shouldn't be part of vectors um so yeah something is strange here like the code doesn't seem very doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me doing things without pushing anything first and loading this like this is the first instruction that is executed i think we might have a problem with the code it's probably not loaded correctly or something like that oh i think i know what it might be so i think uh we have seen this is an enormous program like if we take a look at the size of the program it's far bigger than anything we have seen before and um you can see like um hex files they have this format where they have um each line has the first column is just the number of uh, data bytes and then the second one is the address and then this is the record type and you can see like um we have uh those and this is the data and the checksum and you can see most of the code is like records number zero which is just uh defining uh, the data to be loaded but then it begins with record number four and the reason for that you can see that the uh, address the address part is just uh two bytes like uh four hex digits that's two bytes and it's not enough to address the entire address space of the pi pico so that's why we have record number four that's it's sort of the prefix the higher uh two bytes and that's how we can address four bytes and my guess uh, is that this one only has uh one yeah it only has this record it doesn't appear anywhere else and also probably the other programs we have uh we have tested like they all also uh, have this only at the beginning of file so the code is always loaded uh with this prefix but this one is probably a bit bigger um and yeah you can see it has uh two two of these uh and i remember i had the same problem with uh where is the second one why doesn't it go there oh yeah it has two uh, I had the same problem with the Arduino simulator at some point with the AVR. I tried to load a very big program into the 80 mega and it didn't work. And I guess uh, we just didn't implement this uh, this uh, inside the uh, load hex uh, function that we have here. Uh, it's, yeah, you see, it's just uh, checks if the record type is zero, then it loads, otherwise it ignores it. So um instead of that let's just extend it to support um yeah so let's do something like that let base uh current high high address bytes to be zero and then if we are seeing record number four then high address bytes um would it be and uh i guess we should yeah i will probably um write a proper implementation of it or look for it on npm at some point uh and just use it instead of like this hacky implementation here but for now let's just uh uh do that so basically we want to do this parse int just like we do here line up string that is why is it from three to four though oh this is four bytes sub str not substring this is the length so in this case we need to take four bytes from each index right after here that's column 10 so index 9 probably uh, index 9 4 bytes let's just const log high address bytes high address bytes and uh, 
since uh, we ignore this, uh, it actually worked in the past because uh, like we uh, ignore this prefix. So we always loaded to uh, addresses that are starting from zero and our code just uh, loads it into the flash, which makes sense, but the flash is not mapped at zero. And now we are no longer ignoring this uh, base address. So in this case, we should tell load hex like to subtract some value from, uh, from the addresses that it has to, let's say zero by default. And then adder can be high address by shifted by uh, 16 then instead of here we can do this minus or we can probably do this minus space address all right let's see uh if that did anything hmm. yeah it's already running so now i expect to see like uh this high address byte console log with uh one zero zero and then yeah it's, it seems correct yeah let's see now with one zero zero yeah it seems to be uh reading this uh zero four records correctly uh, so we don't need that and hopefully at this point uh we shall see uh, in GDB something that makes more sense. Hmm. Now it didn't load anything. So still not there. Uh, I could do the reason B. Uh, so this is correct because we printed it. Oh yeah, we should subtract base address for from the whole thing, not from the that twice, subtract once. Too many parentheses, I guess we don't need those ones. Yeah, now it seems correct. And why isn't it happy about this? Don't know, no idea, but let's try again. All right. Okay. Now we get something different. Oh, let's go down to these vectors. Yeah, I don't know. It still prints them as instructions, but I think now it, at least there is a pattern. So it's probably more correct than it used to be. Let's try and see what happens. Okay. So now, where did they stop? Who? Whoa somewhere else even though it seems to have maybe executed more code than before let's do the same trick as before where we uh, printed a trace of the execution this string 16 to see what's going on yeah running blink isn't easy but that's the arduino blink so it's also embed os we are running a complete operating system here Oh, we need to uh, start running it to see some output. Yeah, no output yet? Yes, there is some output. Anyway, yeah, we can see a trace and now this trace looks much better. So yeah, that's probably the part where it's copying memory. I remember we had something like that. And then it somehow gets into the RAM. Interesting, it runs some code from the RAM goes back to running, uh, what is that? You are sent, oh, why should you are sent anything? Interesting, OD. Oh, nice, embed OS. So there is some output here. Error message, module one, code, right. So yeah, so, now it's much better than it used to be. We do have an error message from embedOS, which is uh, quite annoying to have this error, but at least um, at least we can we, we know uh, what's that the code is running. So uh, yeah, we probably fixed that first issue, and now we should try to look into this uh, error message. But first, let's commit this fix. So. Uh, 
this is just console log uh, fix demo uh, improve Intel hex loader or support for uh, large hex files yeah, improve Intel hex loader to handle your four records yeah and the reason i'm familiar with those uh with this format so much is because i had a very similar issue in uh the avr um in the avr uh it's we even copied it from the avr in the avr uh emulator so that's why um we are such a good friend this intel x and i and i anyway getting back to uh looking at the uh blink Oh, do, 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 do. so uh, Che Guevara says an idea since species increased before execution, maybe in 16 bit instruction, use, use the same logic, increase PC as a first instruction. Not sure what this is related to, but uh, I think if you can open an issue and then we can discuss it, that would be great. Um, right now you really want to figure this out to see what's going wrong here and it's the, the, the nice thing is that we already have uart uh, so we can see some of the output here before this goes totally wrong and i guess um yeah this is i guess we can even uh copy paste it and then just remove or oh, didn't select anything, everything. You want to select everything that starts with UART sent, copy, paste. No, oh, for some reason it doesn't work, only in the search. Anyway, uh, I wonder why it doesn't work. Oh, I, I know what we can do. We can prep UART sent in a blink output.txt. No. Oh, maybe why? Yes. Oh, oh my, that's a UDF 16. Uh, save with encoding, UDF 8, go away. Okay, but yeah, our message, why don't we see all of those? Oh, there is like all of those. Anyway, we can now copy that and remove all the UART scents. Yeah, embed OS in for our status code module error message. There is no error message, but there is some error. That's interesting and uh, we can probably try to figure out from this blink output who is uh, printing this error uh, i mean see all those addresses uh, that's let's see what's that let's run gdb again uh, da, 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 okay and then Reconnect GDP. Let's see what's there. IRQ init priorities. Okay. Let's set a breakpoint here. And run. Oh, and now we are going to get a bunch of output, and that's going to take a while. So let's just uh, remove these prints. Stop this stop, go away. Uh, that's in RB2040. Right. And restart. We didn't even restart GDB. Temporary breakpoint. Yeah, but at least we are getting it somewhere. That's a beginning. Okay. Okay, first of all, we can see that there is uh, an MRS that we don't respect. Uh, that might be a problem. 
Uh, all right, where are we? IRQ in its priorities. I wonder why we don't get a good uh, back, good back traces here. Anyway, let's try to you know step here and see what's going on here. Where are we? IRQ set priority finish. Does it ever finish this function? Or maybe it dies in IRQ set priority? It does do a lot of things. I wonder why it's running so slowly when we are running in the debugger. I mean, I think uh, in case of, let's interrupt it for a moment. Is it dead? Where are we? Yeah, we are still in IRQ init priorities probably. Yeah, I mean, okay, we killed GDB. Let's retry that. I mean, I'm sending a single instruction and it takes like forever to return. Uh, set debug remote uh, one. Yeah, it does send it and receive a lot of packets for its single instruction, but still, like, it still takes a lot of time. I mean, we are running on localhost, and that should be super fast. It shouldn't take so much time. So, I did not define instruction. Yeah. yeah, so GDB is got confused. Anyway, um, I think I might know why it's slow. I think I've seen this before. We have this GDB server. Um, and if I remember, no JS localhost slow. Yeah. No answer. Somebody has this problem. Mm -hmm. Maybe slow socket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't seem. Buffer size. Hmm. Yeah, I think I've seen this before where like connections to local host on uh, Node.js are running really slow. Oh, maybe with express. Express is like the common uh, HTTP server, uh, or the most common for Node.js. Oh, da, 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 da. nothing. Problem. Oh, what is that? Problem disappeared. Set no delay. What is that doing? Oh, Nagel's algorithm. I think I remember that algorithm. So, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Nagel algorithm means that um, 
Yeah, it delays data before it's sent to the network through optimized throughput at the expense of latency. Let's see, I think that might do the trick. So uh, we are here and then uh, when we have a socket, where do we get a socket? A uh, handle connection, let's try that. Uh, socket dot set no delay true. Let's try to see if it improves anything. Cool, so we have this. And lay SM. Oh wow, see this. Now this is blazingly fast, like stepping. Wow. I mean, wow, this is a huge difference. Like it just happens immediately. I have to, I don't have to wait. I can like step all day. And then uh, let's go to this. Don't remember where was that uh, inside this output. Yeah, let's break here, continue, and finish. Yeah, it does seem to run faster, even though it doesn't seem to finish. So it probably dies in this RQ set priority somehow. Anyway, uh, yeah, we got this is magic. Like now, GDB is so much faster. Amazing. So fix GDB server make it faster by disabling angel using a set no delay this disables nagels i meet this nagel guy one day i mean why did they have to invent an algorithm that slows gdb down where debugging on localhost anyway uh so I'm happy that we have a faster GDB now. I didn't know it could be that fast. Um, and um, I think with this, I mean, we still have a lot of work or some work to do to figure out uh, what's going on with uh, this embed OS. Uh, it seems so far, it seems like it, it bails off somewhere uh, here probably when uh, executing this, um, interrupt priority function so uh, we'll have to look at that uh, next week to figure out what goes wrong here uh, yeah seen where were we yeah like somewhere along these lines it runs this code probably it seems like a loop and then we have a missing instruction what is that maybe we we should start with that next time uh, let's uh, this ASM at this address, this S, what is that, 26, SVC, mm, SVC, yeah, SVC I think is like a system core or something like that, uh, SVC, yeah, probably supervisor call. So yeah, so probably it's calling the uh, sort of operating system with this SVC instruction. And I guess that's something we should do next time. So uh, let's take a note of that, uh, SVC. We already have the mechanism for exception, so it shouldn't be too hard. Um, so don't need this. We had this like file with all those nodes, yeah, this one. So, oh, let's also print the opcode for that. So that's, this is the opcode. Just copy the whole line again. Okay, missing instruction. Cool. So we have that instruction for next time. And then maybe this will fix the issue with the embed OS. Uh, let's see if we have any other missing instructions. Not implemented. Yeah, a few more probably as well. DF uh, 0 that's the same one, right? DF, yeah. 
three calls to this instruction that we haven't implemented. So that might be interfering with the flow of the program. Um, so yeah, so we have uh, something to start with for the next time implementing this uh, SVC instruction and uh, syscall mechanism on top of exceptions probably or that we already have. And then we'll keep debugging uh, Blink or maybe we get lucky and uh, Arduino Blink will work out of the box. I don't know. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this session. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the progress we got so far, especially uh, with the discovery of this uh, uh, little single line of code that makes, makes GDB so much faster now. Um, and uh, I wish you a great rest of the week and see you again next Tuesday. Until then, bye bye.